Hey guys, so I ran into a perfect example of a comparison between the style of writing tests in Jest versus writing them in Cypress. So here we have a Jest endpoint test testing a serverless API. In this case, it's a Twitter clone. And what we're covering here is that create a user in the beginning, and then we have a tweet. We create our tweet and then we like that tweet. We unlike it and then intermediately we check the likes and ensure that what we like should go into some table and then check the likes again and then ensure that what we disliked isn't there anymore. All right, so let's just go through the Jest test. So we like the tweet. It's just a GraphQL query that I'm abstracting. It's so often used that it's a good abstraction to be able to use everywhere. We have some helpers here just to not repeat some code. So in the bottom, we'll be getting the tweets and then we'll be getting the likes. So just because these few lines were repeating, they're into helpers right here. So in the first it block, what we're doing is after we have liked the tweet, we ensure that that liked, we get the tweets and then we ensure that that liked is gone through. And then we try to like the tweet again. Right? Again, the same like that we have right here. In fact, maybe this could be a helper by its two liner. It's okay. And then we ensure that we cannot like that again. We get this error. After that, we get the likes and ensure that, so this is a new query. We're just making sure that after we have liked the tweet, uh, we want to check the shape of the data that's up uh, in the service. Right? So that tweet that we liked should be that tweet that we created, but now it has some added properties. Right? So we're just making that check. So one it block, we're liking, and then we're trying to like again, and then we're checking get likes. Okay, so the second int block, now is the unlike. So in the test state, in the before hook, right, we have, this is our test state. We, and then even before that, in the top before block, we have the user signed in. Okay, and then we already have a tweet. So that's our test state, which is fine. And in the describe block, we have another test state of liking it. And then, then we're working on things. So we can run these int blocks in isolation and they don't rely on each other. So with the second hit block, with the unlike, so we have already liked the tweet, and then we go and unlike it, we make a check, and then we go to the likes table and ensure that, you know, it, it's also, those changes also reflect there. But you'll see these isolation of the hit blocks because whenever you're writing tests in Jest, you want to ensure that the blast radius, so wherever things can fail, is as small as possible, uh, simply because it's very difficult to figure out where something fell. So you supplement that maybe with these consoles, like, okay, we have a console, the user got created, and you know, we like the tweet, we cannot like it twice, we make a GraphQL request, and uh, let's see, what is this one? Ah, I have a cleanup at the end. Uh, it's because of all these nested, uh, test hooks, it's not very easy to ensure that uh, things are super cleaned up at the end. So I, I had a difficult time and we can disregard this error. You know, when we run the full thing, it, it just works fine. But uh, the point I'm trying to get to is that it's, you're literally testing in the dark when you're testing with us. It doesn't matter if you're doing service E2E testing, you're doing um, component testing, when you're testing with Jest, you are in the dark. So your best option is always to keep these it blocks as minimal as possible so that you can know where these failures are coming from. So let's take a look at the different style in a Cypress test of that's doing the same exact thing. So we'll scroll down to the relevant section. Right there. And the number of lines of the code is about the same. Right? We have all these comments and console logs and whatnot. Uh, but you'll immediately notice that 
is actually less code, right? It's much less to write. It's I, I think the number of lines has to do with the formatting, right? So what's happening in this? Like what what is the what is the difference? Again, we have the two helpers, just like at top, like to want to get the tweets, want to get the likes, and you'll notice that we have only one at top because this whole thing is just one flow. The with Cypress, the difference is that you think of flows. What we're doing here is we're liking something, and then we're checking our get likes table. We're unliking something, and then we're checking our get likes table. That's all we're doing, right? That's just one flow. Like we don't need all these granular if blocks. If usually you might even see that on the Jest version, uh, this portion may be an if block, and then you know this portion may be an if block, and to ensure that uh, they are independent of each other. Um, you may need to nest more before hooks, right? and because that's the only way that it, you don't really have a better option, right? Um, these granular if blocks, that's the way. But with Cypress, okay. So we'll, first, let's just take a look at what we're doing and compare one one. Right? So here we were getting the tweets, okay. In the beginning, we had this test state where we're doing that there. So we can just put that right here in the if block. Right? We, we are liking the tweet. Done. Okay. And then we are immediately making the assertion right there, just like we're doing it here. It's the same assertion. Uh, it's just yielding the tweets zero liked and then tweets zero liked. That's the exact same thing. So you'll see how concise it is and how to the point. And right after that, we try to like the same tweet twice. So you see, we have the same console log comment and then we have the same sign log comment. So we try to like, like right here, and then we expect an error, right? So that portion is the same thing as that portion. All right, let's just scroll down. So get likes should show the like tweet. Let's take a look. In fact, uh, we could just console log the same exact thing. So they are equivalent right here. All right. Get likes should show this like tweet. All right, and then. We do, we call our get likes helper right here, like we did exactly. And then we make an assertion that has some array of length greater than one. And then we check the tweet zero object right here. And then we make another assertion, right? I mean, you will see that the expect syntax is quite clunky. I'm sure we could probably use the spot library to make it neat and concise like that, but it's a lot less code to write and the uh, very understandable that you're doing the same exact thing and you're just chaining instead of, you know, an assignment and then make assertions on that assignment. You, I mean, you'll see this everywhere between RTL and Cypress component testing, within uh, Cypress E2E and uh, Playwright, the same, uh, Jest or Cypress, exact same style difference is there. The key point is that, look, the unlike flow is a separate if block. And because that's the only way you're going to be comfortable while diagnosing your issues. However, in Cypress, this doesn't matter. Everything gets logged into the time travel debugger. Right? So we saw, all right, so let's just do that. So let's just run this whole test. And then we'll do the same thing over at Cypress side. Uh, tweet. And I'll only talk about the section that we're comparing. But if you look at the test, right, you will see everything step by step as you're flowing through. You'll see the post request. You'll see that response that you got, right? Like everything's there. And if you don't like that UI, everything's also in dev tools. Like, the, like so you don't have to console log anything. You know step by step everything that happened. So you're not testing the duck anymore. You have your logs, so you don't have to make those granular it plugs and uh, try to wrangle with test hooks to ensure that the it blocks are independent of each other. It's just one flow. You just think of flows. You just go through the test line by line with your time travel debugger, and you're seeing every piece of data that happened along the way. So long story short, right, the point I'm trying to make is with Jest, you may have some learned patterns, 
where you are keeping these it blocks as minimal as possible because you're afraid of things failing and being very difficult to diagnose. And they are. They are extremely difficult to diagnose. All you have is basically your console and basically your output from just. Right? And good luck when something fails. The only way I use Jest, whether it's in RTL, RTL, whether that's unit testing, uh, is with Wallabjs. That way you can at least get inline feedback as you are. And if you don't know Wallabjs, right? Because it is, uh, I think it's a free trial, but it will it will give inline response as you are typing in. Like it will exactly give it there. It's the only way I use it. The only reason I'm not using it here because in the before all block, uh, user is being created. So that every character that I type while using Wallaby is going to cause two users to be created. I think my limit per day is maybe 15, maybe 100. So at like 20 characters, you're out of here. Right? You can't test with a cognitive anymore. So that's why I'm not using it here. I don't think it's a good option with E2E either because you don't want your entire E2E suite rerunning in jest as you're typing uh and then wallaby is rerunning the thing so it's not a very good fit uh simply because uh, with jest um, like unfortunately you're in the dark all the time um that's it right? and it's difficult to diagnose issues uh this is the same story this is why i always make the argument of rtl versus service component testing again you're in the dark Good luck, right? Like you are developing front end UI, you know, you don't even see your DOM versus all the visuals, every step by step, everything easy to diagnose. But the thing I like the most is I can express what the intent of the test without having to wrestle um, and make the framework more usable, right? Wildflow, like, okay, check some tables, get likes. And then unlike, and then check some tables again. That's it. It's a simple test. But when you have to make tests independent and not important, right? But if you want to do that and keep the blast radius small, then you will have to nest these before blocks, these describe blocks. You have to keep doing that in order to keep your it blocks as minimal as possible. But that's all. Uh, so if you're using Cypress, you can stop doing that minimal it blocks nonsense. And you can instead you know, use the time travel debugger and express tests as flows. That's all. Enjoy.